All right, so really we're, we're digging at the bottom here. We try and find every trick we can for going to a place either to get enough speed and as we saw to slow us down. What other tricks are in our bag? Well, there's kind of one other trick. It's not going to help you get into Earth orbit or even geostationary orbit. Okay. But if you're going to faraway planets, it's helpful. This is called the gravity assist. Yes. This was famously done by the Voyager uh, space probe. So what happens is you launch from the Earth. This wanted to visit both Jupiter and Saturn. Yep. So it came up behind Jupiter, took some photos as it rushed past at high speed, but then used Jupiter's gravity to accelerate it and change its velocity so it got to Saturn much faster. And you can see the, the delta V here, which is... 21 kilometers per second, not the nine we were talking about earlier. Yeah, so you see it's slowing down as it goes out, 19, 18, 7, 16, 15 kilometers a second, Picks 13, up. and then it jumps up to 24 as it went past. So it and picked then, up. And we slow a little bit down, but we don't slow nearly as much in the solar system. We're way further away from the sun now. Yeah. Pick up a little bit more speed and off we go. Now, when I first heard about this, I thought this doesn't make sense because let's say you're going near an object Sure enough, let's say you're going near Jupiter, as you approach Jupiter, its gravity's going to suck you in and make you go faster and That's faster. Right. But then as you go out again, its gravity's going to pull you back and slow you down. Yes. So it'll speed you up while you're going past, which you actually don't want, because it means you've got even less time to take pictures as you fly past at high, high speed. And then slow you down when you're leaving, which is, again, not what you want. So if Jupiter was just stationary, that's it. It would give you no net effect. Yes. The trick is that, in fact, it's moving. And this is what the top diagram shows. Yes. So sure you gain speed coming in lose it going out but you also pick up the sideways motion of whatever you're doing your um, gravity assist from that's right and that's how it works the best example um, is like trying to throw balls off the front of a passing train so if you're or you throw a ball off a train normally if the train's stationary you throw like i throw a ball off you it's gonna it'll bounce back at about the right. same speed it came or maybe a bit less yep but if you're running towards me at 100 kilometers an hour and i throw a ball the ball bounce back with whatever the recall speed is, plus actually my, my speed or the speed of the double, train. Double the speed of the that's train. Right. So that's what you're doing. You're, you're picking up advantage of the speeds of these planets. And another example is Voyager 2, which went overboard on this. So it had an ex acceleration from Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, getting all the way out to Neptune. And that was the only way they could get past all four planets in a reasonable time. It still took them like 20 years to get there. <laughs> uh, but having four gravi three gravity assists in fact, they had to launch in the mid-1970s because that was the only time these planets were lined up do to enough. allow this to have the whole thing. We can't do it now. Because otherwise the Delta V would just not be possible to do too much of a churn. So they really had to launch at that time and, and we're not going to see in our lifetimes any other time where they're lined up enough to make this work. That's right. So, but then people have tried many more incredibly convoluted ones. <laughs> this is, we talked earlier about Halley's Comet, the mission to that, the JOTO space probe, and that had to fly past at high speed. But having it, done that, the European Space Agency wanted to actually visit and stay at um, Comet, Com yep. uh, whose name I won't try and pronounce. Comet 67P. Yes, uh, Churaimov, Gerasimov, whatever it yeah. was. <laughs> um, and so, but, but the delta V for comets is enormous. Yes. And so they used a really complicated gravity assist, which did multiple passes of different planets to, um, to get the velocity up to match it. That's right. So it actually was able to match velocity with it and stay in orbit and land on it. By doing both the Earth and Mars and Jupiter, I think, as well. Yes. So uh, another example is the Lassus Lucy space probe, yes. which is currently on its way. Uh, and this one uh, also did uh, a number of, I think, several Earth gravity assists and a Mars gravity assist. So it Just went to past get the Earth there, once, right. and now it's going to come past the Earth again. So there's another gravity assist. And then it's going to fly past Mars. And get another one. And it's just going to, to the, make it all the way up. It's going out to the Trojan asteroids. That's and it's right. an orbit which will loop around there and then come back, do another gravity assist past the Earth to change its direction and get up to the other bunch of Trojan asteroids. That's right. So uh, this makes your mission very long. These things can take decades to get there because they have to loop around Venus and then around Mars. And around That's right. I think, it, I think it's six years just from the launch to getting to the first batch of Trojan asteroids for Lucy. But... You need the delta V from somewhere, and the cost of just having bigger rockets it's, just makes it absolutely ridiculous. It, this is the best option possible.